Okay, good morning everybody. Good afternoon if you are on the other side of the pond. <laughs> Welcome to today's Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. We are flying from Volcaria. Volcaria. Yep. Two. We're gonna go we're gonna take off from runway ten. We're gonna come out here and go up the coast here. We're going to try to come, when we take off, we're going to come all the way out over here, hang a left, fly up this coast here, on up all the way until we get past Cocoa Beach. We're going to come across the uh, skid pad here, and then we're going to turn, we're going to try to capture the Kennedy Space Center as a point of interest that's the visitor center right there and then we are going to call and request landing clearance at space coast regional now i'm hoping we're going to pick runway 27 as our landing and and as we are near the airport right here we should get a clearance straight in but we'll see we may have to come around enter the pattern here and then come around and land there. But we'll see what, what we come up with. Starting a few minutes early, I apologize about the lack of the Train Sim World 2 live stream today. The downloads took just over two hours to complete. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's get in here. We got uh, lightning storms right now in Florida. That's live weather, but we are going to clear that up. And we are going to have some nice sunny weather here in Florida for our, um, yeah. So we we will see what we can do. I'm going to try to keep my altitude about three thousand feet if I can. Now the since we're taking Actually, off, I think Niner, traffic Cessna two three seven taking off runway one zero straight out departure. All right, so let's get in here, get our stuff set up. Let's turn it on, take out the live weather, just so that we have some, we are sure of our clear skies. Let's also do, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, where is, oh, there he is, flight assistant. We need to turn on our, okay, so that's already on. So, good morning, Pulse. How are you? All right, let's get the parking brake off. And let's get out of here. Now, I'll double check to make sure that we have a... Uh, We know how to line up for our runway once we, uh... Alright, there we go. Nice golf course right there, looks like. Get a little too sun drenched. <laughs> I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, kind of miss doing the, uh train sim stream today because of the updates it took so long to do. Uh, a lot of approach, stuff Cessna to download. 237 is type Cessna Skyhawk, two miles east of X-ray 59 or 600 feet. Request flight following. Cessna 237, Orlando approach. Squawk 0107. Squawk 0107, Cessna 237. So... Yes, talking about train sim world two. All right, so here's the dealio. I did have a look. I will say. Roger, Cessna two three seven. 
unequivocally things look significantly better. I did go on, I did check Peninsula Corridor, the lighting looks significantly improved. I just was at San Francisco only I, and just kind of walking around the cab, you know, kind of just checking things out. How did the, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it was, it looked really good. Uh, I did do a little bit of a run on Hamburg to Lubeck. That looked absolutely fantastic. Again, no clipping. Lighting looked phenomenal. You know, so I'm giving the update a thumbs up. Now, the major issue apparently is for older gen console owners who apparently the update is not going as according to plan. Sucks to be them. I'm not gonna lie, that that sucks to be them. But everybody knew, I think, that this update was generally for the next gen consoles because everything was under the old gen, and so you were kind of hindered in your ability to enjoy the game fully because everything was done with the you know under the auspice of old gen console players so uh they have a lot of things to sort out it seems uh when it comes to their you know getting those fixes out for the ps4 players especially it seems like i don't know about anybody who's on the older xbox like the xbox one x or or anything like that but i can say on my series s it looks pretty darn good so, uh, yeah, looking forward to showing it off tomorrow. We'll be back. We'll be on the Baker Lou line tomorrow. I just, as time went on, and I was like, We're, there's no way I'm going to be able to do both. And, uh, you know, do a, a full run on Baker Lou line and then do uh, a, uh, and then do this. So. We're just going to have this nice, easy-going flight. Let, let somebody else deal with all the, the anger issues with the old-gen console players and, and uh, that whole fiasco. <laughs> oh, man, I'd say. I, I do, I do kind of feel bad in a way uh, because it's just, it's, you know, it's just a lot of stuff to do. I did go on the forums and leave a positive message just because I think they, at times like that when a lot of people are upset, and some of it is they're upset for, for various reasons, uh, you know, I'd rather at least try to be, say something a little bit positive so that they they know that not everybody and I don't expect that we're going to, it's going to be perfect. I have no no uh, notion in my head that things are going to be one hundred percent perfect. Okay. And I think if you expect that, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah, I agree with that, Pulse. Absolutely. The problem is, is that the for people who are, you know, just console players or gamers in general, right? We tend to, we we have all these expectations, and sometimes those are expectations that we create in our own head that aren't realistic. And so when we are let down, we take it out on the developers or whoever. We, oh, how dare you? You know, you let me down and da da da. da. And it's like, wow, I, I let you down. I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I never said that this was going to be this. You know. So, hello, Pilot Mo. So, uh, yeah, it's. I, I do understand that a lot of the stuff that they are doing, it's it's kind of uncharted territory. They they couldn't have foreseen 
know, they don't have a crystal ball. They couldn't foresee the issues with the update and the older gen consoles. They could have, they could have, I mean, they could have probably, they checked all the checks and, and everything that they could possibly do, but they could not have foreseen the, uh, the issues. So I think that's something that they need, you know, the, the gamers need to, you know, the, the players need to, to understand that. That it's not, there's nothing, there's no malicious intent or anything like that. It's just, you know, things are the way they are. But anyway, hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully everybody's having a good Thursday morning slash afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, we're just going to fly up this coast here in Florida. Just going to have a nice, relaxing flight. And we're going to pick up the Kennedy Space Center here eventually. We have a nice flight over to the Kennedy Space Center. Although I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was reminded last night by my friend in Vegas, oh, you can't fly over Kennedy Space Center, that's restricted airspace. And I said, well, I know, but it's a video game, and I can kind of do what I want. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah, so hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, we're just going to have this nice Florida coastal flight today. Tomorrow morning we will be on the London Underground Train Symbol 2. And then we will have uh, our uh, see how it goes. And we'll be back here tomorrow, uh, same time, as far as I know, barring any other crazy incidences. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure out where we're going to fly tomorrow. Once we land up there at Space Coast Regional, we'll, we'll kind of come up with an idea for tomorrow. I'm trying to think of some place fun and exciting that we can do. So, yeah, nice, nice morning flight. All right, so there's Patrick Air Force Base. So we are getting close to Cape Canaveral. I remember that's that's one of the landmarks that that's. Uh, I know we're getting closer, so we are. Now, if we have to loop around a few times and just kind of look at things from the air and all that, that's fine. You know, I'm not in any rush or anything. So, uh, now I did, last night, just for the heck of it, I did do a flight from, in the Airbus 320, from Oakland to Sacramento International. What I didn't realize is if you are going to, you have to put in you're fly not flying visual flight rules you are doing an instrument flight from from one location to the other and then you have to pick your ILS approach for the runway there's a drop down and I had to look this up because I'm like I must be missing something because I I did I was trying to do a flight from San Francisco to Las Vegas and it it rooted me through mountains and I ended up I had to like get altitude and then it just everything got all kind of wonky after that. Uh, so that was a problem. I ended up crashing. So I went back through and was like, okay, what am I missing here? And that's what I was missing. So eventually we are gonna try another flight. Now the way it rooted me was kind of weird. Depending on which way you take off it initially I did one where I took off from runway 30 out of Oakland and it had me turn left and then head south into the Central Valley and then then I was going to turn north but it was like this really weird sort of uh, route so 
Yeah, I guess that's just how things are. You know, you have to kind of get in in line for your flight. You know, you gotta go here, and then you're gonna turn and start your approach and everything. Uh, yeah, so well, there is Patrick Air Force Base right there below us. Don't know anything about Patrick Air Force Base. What's there? I can't comment on it, so I don't really know. It's, it's like a pretty. I guess it would be a pretty neat place to be stationed. I mean, you're right on the coast. The only thing that would suck is if you're, you know, hurricanes and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it looks like it would be a bad place to be stationed. All right, so, yeah, we are here. I'm going to turn just a little bit to the left as we follow this coastline. Because that should take us right towards Kennedy. Yeah, it was, uh, so I'm learning a little bit more about setting up the A320 for a flight. Uh, the pushback is a bit, still a bit, <laughs> it's, I feel like I've got pushed back far enough. And then, so, a couple times I've had to, like, put the reverse thrust on the A320 just to back up even more and get turned the correct direction. Because it doesn't give you the, your you know, which way to, to follow for taxi until you are pushed back far enough and you stop. Or, you know, it'll automatically, whether you are you feel like you're pushed back far enough or not, it automatically does that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a bit odd. All right, there's Cocoa Beach, Florida. Uh, I think this is where the Ron John Surf Shop originated from, is Cocoa Beach, Florida. And you can go, uh, you can actually go visit their store there. It's a huge, huge store. So they have all kinds of surfing apparel, surfboards, uh, paddle boards, I think. You know, just, it's a Daytona really cool place to go in there if you're ever in the area. So, yeah, there's a uh, shopping center along the, the coast here. That's where the Ron John Surf Shop is. It's, it's not far from the beach. You know, it's like a couple blocks away, but uh, pretty cool place if you ever get a chance to go there. So, I don't remember where. I think it's not far. Okay, so there's that. So I'm guessing it's down. Shoot, I wish it was a landmark. <laughs> it should be, because it's pretty famous. I have no idea where where it would be, but um Yeah, if you ever get a chance to go to Florida Go down to Gogo Beach, visit visit the uh, Ron John Surf Shop. All right, here we are coming over to Cape Canaveral. Mikey, so those green kind of feel like it's right down here somewhere for some reason. This is going pretty darn good overall. We haven't had any major uh, 
know, we've just been able to kind of hover around 3,000 feet, give or take, and, you know, we're doing okay. Alright, now, that in front of us here, yep, there's the skid pad, so the skid strip. I'm not sure what that is exactly. Uh, but we're going to fly over it and take a look from here. So I do, uh, if, you, if you're not following it, do check out SpaceX. They are launching a lot of, well, everything for the most part, as far as I can tell, is they're launching here from Cape Canaveral. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing experience to watch. I'd love to go down there and do, see a live launch. Uh, but the onboard views, whether it's a manned flight or a... Uh, a, uh, you know, like they're launching a satellite or whatever, the views that they have are just absolutely incredible. From, you know, once they take off, they, you know, they track it. Uh, you know, certainly if it's a satellite, they can't say for certain where it's going to go. They cut off the feed, you know, the live feed or whatever, but they kind of talk about, you know, everything looks good, you know, everything's nominal. Um, but yeah, do do follow them on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. Uh, if there's a launch, they they go live. They talk about the flight. You know, they kind of have like a pre-show, so to speak. Uh, but it's to me, having watched the shuttle launches and landings and all that for many years, it's absolutely amazing to see a rocket correct itself, go through the atmosphere, and land on a ship. I just, I am just in awe of that happening. That is just absolutely mind-blowing to me that, that they can do that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, if you love space exploration or, or science or anything like that, go check it out, you know. Give them a sub, uh, you know. They do, I think, well, I don't know if they have live stream chats. They, they sometimes turn that off. I don't know, you know, maybe because people just get a little too weird in the chat. But do go give them a, uh, a look. Give them a subscribe. Um, you know, it's it's this really phenomenal stuff that they're doing. And, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. So, yeah, they, they are definitely doing some, some incredible work. And I think they just they're finding ways to continue that incredible work. So, yeah. If Nick's in the chat, he'll know what I'm talking about because we 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 talked about the, the SpaceX stuff a couple times. <laughs> yeah, just truly amazing stuff. The technology that they've developed to allow a rocket to, that it. It starts firing the boost, you know, the retro, the, the correction engines and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's crazy that it does that. And they're able to reuse all that stuff. So, yeah. kind of where things are and if you please if you well if you visit do go to the visitor center take it just walk around do the whole experience it's uh if they if they still have it do the lunch with the astronaut it's a great time um you know it Especially if you've got kids who are interested in science and stuff like that. Have them listen to the astronaut. 
it is it's it's an eye-opening experience and they will tell you you know this is what my experiences are uh you know that sort of thing um so yeah just it's it's well worth the uh the time uh, even if you know amongst everything else that you can do here do have the uh lunch with the astronaut it's it's absolutely okay, that's not the visitor center the visitor center i think is up Trying to remember where everything is. Maybe that is the visitor center. Okay. okay. This road here to the on the off the left wing tip. I think that's where most people go to view the launches. You can't be up too close, obviously. Uh, If you ever seen the movie The Right Stuff, I think that's where they filmed the scene where the wives are all standing there watching their husbands get launched into space and all that kind of stuff. I think that's where a lot of that takes place is down here, if I remember correctly. It could be a little bit off, but I think that is where, yeah, right there. It's like a viewing area. And then they have like the big countdown uh, timers. You can see it from there as well. All right, so yeah, that should be the visitor center right there coming up. Yep, there it is. Not too bad for a for an old guy remembering where things are. <laughs> <clears throat> I will toot my own horn for a moment when I had to do a uh, leadership course part of my initial leadership course when I was in the army one of the things you had to do is you had to find four points on the map you had to go out and navigate they gave you a map and a compass I found all four of my points didn't even have to uh, I just did everything by terrain association I was probably one of the few people that actually found all four points where some people only find maybe three or four. Some people only find one. So, yeah, it's... Uh... All right, so there's the visitor center, basically. There's the big parking lot. You go in there, and there's like a ticket booth area before you go in, and you can buy your different packages or whatever is available. And then the Atlantis... I can't remember which building the Atlantis is in, the shuttle. I want to say it's this one right up to the right wing tip there, if I remember correctly. But yeah, you have like Rocket Guard in there, just past the marker. That's the building right there that's got the shuttle inside there. Just below the main wheel gear right now, main gear. There we go. The Rocket Garden is pretty cool. A lot of the older sort of uh, rockets are there. Uh, all right. Space Coast Tower Cessna 237 is 6 miles east, 2,800 feet with golf to land. Cessna 237 Space Coast Tower. Altimeter 29 or decimal minor 2 with 276 to 3. Fly left downwind, runway 36. 
Take left downwind runway tree six Cessna 237. All right, there we go. Didn't get the 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 uh, quite the one that I wanted to get, but the, the, the uh, runway. But that's okay. We are going to go into our pattern entry here. Line up, come around, and land. Yeah, that was a pretty good flight. Really enjoyed that. Hopefully everybody else did too. Really nice to see Kennedy Space Center from the air. Kind of not really, weren't really far up, so everything was in pretty good detail too. So, good stuff. The right stuff. <laughs> Highly recommend that movie. It's it's an awesome movie. Uh, about the early days of NASA. And really, it's an entertaining movie, I think. Yeah, good stuff. Alright, so 3-6 looks like that that uh, runway that's running left to right in front of us there from the left wing tip, the left wing to left wing right there. So, yeah, that's where we're heading. Some big names in the movie when they were all very young. Uh, yeah. I've never read the book that uh, Tom Wolf wrote. I'm sure there's more in the book than, than what they showed in the movie, but the movie is really good. I kind of like doing this aerial tourism sort of thing in the game. It's quite kind of fun, you know. Talk about different places and stuff like that. It's it's really good. I enjoy that. But eventually, we're going to start stepping up into. I don't want. I can't. I don't want to do like the super long distance flights uh, in the Airbus 320. Start losing some altitude here. Maybe get some flaps. Maybe get some flaps. We can slow down even more. There we go. Perfect. Still trying to kind of get a get a better feel for all that, of course. But having a lot of fun with this game, this simulator. I couldn't treat it just as a game. It's, it's, I'm really enjoying this. Kind of enjoying the new challenges of learning some, some new stuff. So clear everybody else is enjoying it as well.
Now, this does have an ILS approach. Now, I don't know if... Because my Cessna does have, like, the Garmin... Uh, avionics package with it. So I don't know if, if I could have done an ILS flight. We might have to try that someday. Cessna 237. Space Coast Ground Cessna 237 request taxi to parking. Cessna 237 taxi to General Aviation parking via taxiway Delta Bravo. Hello, Amela, just in time. I just taxi landed. Taxi to General Aviation parking via taxiway Delta Bravo Cessna 237. <laughs> oh, Amela. What are you like? I know you were you were in Joe's stream, probably trying to keep an eye on all the silly folks. That's why I had to leave. I'm sorry, but I I can't I can't be in a stream where people are just. Coming in all super salty and stuff. So real quick, before we leave the stream today, we're going to take a look at something real quick. So I'm curious to see if we can do an IFR low altitude flight. Get a little bit more gas. Get a little more gas. I feel like I'm driving uphill here. Come on. Come on. Okay, well, there we are. That was a good taxi. We had a great flight overall. Uh, really enjoyed that. So let's stop our engine here. Ta-da! Oops. Ground services. We could request fuel supply. Anyway, we've stopped our engine. Uh... Anyway, over. Just do a post check. All of our movable parts are working. All right, so let's go take a look at something real quick. But that was an awesome flight. Great landing. We had a little bit of a bump. 
We've got a little bouncy, but that's okay. We uh, we straightened it out and landed, and there we are. But really nice stuff going over the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Oh, thank you, Pulse. So real quick, we're going to take a look at something for tomorrow. Now, I am going to go. We're going to stay on the East Coast. Let's see. Let's go from here. Let's Apalachicola Municipal. I might be butchering the name of that airport, but sorry. All right, let's see if we go up to we're just over to Panama City, Florida. All right? Runway 33. Oh, that's international. No, we don't want to land there. We want to land at another municipal airport. Nope, can't land at Tyndall Air Force Base. Mexico Beach Airport. No, that's... Can we... Well, yeah. All right, let's go there. So, runway 36. Now, let's see if we go... If we go low altitude IFR, approach, does it have an IL, nope, it doesn't have an ILS approach. We need one with an ILS approach. Uh, that is Northwest Florida Beaches International. I think we could land there because that looks like general aviation parking right there. Alright, let's see if we can get a runway 34 here. So, did, was that uh, lock 16? Is that the runway here? Runway 34. Localizer 16, okay. So, let's make that our arrival. So localizer 16, no, we want ILS 16. There we go. So we could do an ILS flight in this. Um, so yeah, we take off from here, turn, and then we can do an ILS flight or an IFR flight, low altitude. Turn here, follow this, and then we should pick up the pattern here and all that. We'll try that tomorrow just for, for fun. So, yeah, we'll see if we can do that. But we're going to go over. That's We're not far from, um, let's see, fly along. Well, we won't be completely inland, or, you know, we'll kind of maybe, yeah, we'll be inland, but hopefully we'll have a nice, uh, nice flight there. So there's Tyndall Air Force Base, so that means Naval Air Station Pensacola is right there. Yep. If you ever get, if, uh, if you ever get a chance to go... If you're in Florida and you're just going around doing the tour, you know, just touring Florida, if it's open to the public, do go check out the uh, Naval Aviation Museum here in Pensacola. Absolutely amazing. Uh, all kinds of different aircraft there. Uh, check out their website. I think they've got stuff posted, you know, about, about the uh, museum and what they have on display. It changes sometimes. I'm trying to think where... Where the museum is in relation to everything else. Uh, I think it's down here. Is it, uh, where is it? Is that it? Uh, 
because it, it's been expanded on over the years but they do have like outdoor display stuff that should be kind of easy to pick out from the air if I can find it These looks like barracks and stuff where enlisted people live. Yeah, that's all. Oh, wait a minute. There's a museum right there. I think. No, that's not it. Well, maybe it is. That could be it right there. That might be it right there. But yeah, go check that out. But that's what we'll do for tomorrow for our flight. We'll go Al Apalachicola Municipal to our, um, yeah, we'll try an ILS flight that way. So we'll see if, or an IFR flight, I'm sorry. And we should pick up the ILS approach on Wern Ray 16 there. So it should guide us in, basically is what I'm saying. So... We'll, we'll give that a shot tomorrow, see how that works out for us. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thanks all for coming in and hanging out. I will see you tomorrow on the Baker Lou line on Train Sim World 2. Uh, 6.30 in the morning, East Coast, 11.30 uh, 